Good morning guys, I have finally kind of recovered from my cold that I had last week. I'm still a little bit croaky in the voice, you might be able to hear it, uh, and I'm a teeny tiny bit sniffly still, but other than that, I'm perfectly fine, and so we can get back to normal videos. Yay. Today's vlog is going to be a bit of a mishmash of different things. I want to update you on how the hamsters are doing, on how Sulphur and Osmium are doing with their taming. I have some footage from one of their first taming sessions and then I'm going to do some more taming with them today so you can see the kind of progress they've made and how well they are doing. Um, now I'm not doing an official taming diary series for these guys just because they were already pretty tame when I got them and so I really don't feel like there's going to be enough footage of their taming sessions to make a whole episode, let alone a whole series on, on their taming. So I'm not going to do it with them. I didn't do it with Potassium either for the same reasons he was already pretty tame when I got him. Before we get into any of that though, today I can finally talk to you about something I first mentioned a couple of months ago. I asked you guys whether you'd be interested in having a merch line available to you for this channel and the overwhelming response was Yes, yes please, please yes right now. And if you follow me on Twitter, I know I say this every time, if you're following me on Twitter, if you follow me on Twitter, you know the progress that this has made, but if you don't follow me on Twitter, you may have thought I'd just forgotten about this and it's just been ignored and, and left to float in the air. That is not the case. Since I got the response from you guys that this was something you wanted, I have been working on starting up a uh, merch shop. I've had to do all the research into the sites that, that host merch shops and you know trying to find one that does uh, that has a good reputation, that does good quality items, and that also has their prices pretty low or at least reasonable because I know a lot of you guys are pretty young, some of you are not even working yet, so you don't have a lot of money. So I, that was a really important thing for me to make sure the prices were as low as was reasonably possible. So I was doing the research, I was working on the art, I was setting up the shop itself, and I can finally, today, say to you guys, we officially have a merchandise shop and it is linked in the description box beneath this video and will be linked in the description box beneath all future videos so it'll be nice and easy for you to find. The final thing I should add is that I am only in charge of basically the artwork itself. So if you have any questions on ordering, on you know issues with shipping or pricing or anything like that, that stuff needs to be directed to Redbubble itself. They have a contact help section on their website um, but yeah that stuff that stuff is out of my hands so if you need information to do with that you gotta direct it to Redbubble. Actually there's one more thing I want to talk about in regards to merchandise. When I first mentioned this there were a few people asking if I would do animal products as merchandise, uh, you know if I would actually make them myself and then you know send them off to you guys. That is not going to happen. I don't want anyone getting their hopes up or requesting that or anything. It's not happening. I'm sorry, there are many reasons why that I can't do that. So please, you know, don't ask. It's not happening. Anyway, thank you for being so patient with this. I hope that you're excited about the new merch. I hope that, that at least most people can afford it. Like I said, I was I tried very, very hard to keep the prices as low as possible for you guys. Um, and hopefully even those who, who maybe can't afford it right now will be able to save up and get things that they want. And also, don't feel obliged to buy anything. I am in no way going to be offended if you don't want this stuff. I promise you. This is, this is just for the people who do want it, so don't worry. Anyway, that's enough babbling about merchandise. Let us continue with the rest of this vlog. Right now the hamsters are all still fast asleep naturally. It's the middle of the day. Although, and I don't know if they're going to grow out of this because they're still pretty young, Sulfur and Osmium both have very interesting waking times. They wake up around about midday every day and they're up for an hour, hour and a half, somewhere around that time. And then they go back to bed and they get up in the evening like normal. But it's really interesting that they get up in the daytime. I, I haven't had that many day wakers and I haven't had one for a while. So it's, it's kind of nice. If they stay this way, I'll be quite happy about it. Iodine for sure will not be awake until like right at the end of this vlog because her waking time is now very late. She wakes between about 11 and 1 o'clock in the evening. Um, so I can't do anything with her until then. So, you know, if, you, if you're here just for Iodine, stick around to the end. Also, please excuse the small piles of mess you'll keep seeing around my home. There's one there. There's a pile on the sofa. The bedroom is 
as always, an explosion. <laughs> the cats are fast asleep on the bed, so they're happy in there. They don't mind. Um, but we are, this weekend, we're going to be decorating for uh, the winter solstice. So I'm doing my last minute clear out, as I always do. As I've mentioned the solstice though, for people who don't yet already know, if you've not got the memo, I am going to be putting uh, this year's Vlogstice series on this channel. I put it on my lifestyle channel last year um, and I asked you guys, you know, whether you wanted it on the lifestyle channel again or whether you preferred it here and you guys were just like, no, put it, put it on the hamster channel, just, 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 just do it. Just do it. So for the vast majority of December, I will be vlogging. I'm gonna try and do every single day. I'm not gonna promise that's gonna happen, but I'm definitely going to try and do every single day. You will at the very least get significantly more videos than you normally get. So look forward to that. So to kill a bit more time, I am going to just run the dog out to the toilet because he is just looking at me with cross legs right now. Just like, please, I, I would very much like to pee right now. Thank you very much. So I'm gonna run him out and then I'm going to clean my office because that's still a mess from um, the project I did the other day. And hopefully, by the time that's done, Ozzy and Sully might be awake. We'll see. Nobody, but nobody, appreciates the new hamsters more than the cats. <laughs> this is just cat TV right here. Uh, excuse me, buddy. You know the rules. And so do you. You're not supposed to be sitting here. <laughs> I can't believe I missed that with the camera. <laughs> the wheel rolled round and she just... She just fell off. Look, look, you're gonna get yourself into a silly situation, right? All of you come away. You, definitely, definitely you not here. You, stop trying to play whack-a-mole with her. Come on, out, 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 out. No unsupervised visitations, thank you. Hi. Yeah, I know. This is, <laughs> this is the issue. <laughs> you spend so much time climbing. I really need to make some climbing toys so you can stop climbing on the bars. Although I don't think that's gonna stop it. You just love to climb, don't you? You just love it. Yeah, I haven't washed my hands, sorry. Please don't chew me, thank you. I am just trend central right now. I need a decent looking jacket for wearing around the house. I can't keep wearing dressing gowns. This, this isn't practical. decided to go back to bed but Sulphur is awake so we're gonna do a little bit of taming with him now and he's not doing too badly considering in his first couple of taming sessions his biggest problem he's, he's, he's a very confident hamster he's not uh, shy he's not easily startled but his biggest issue is that he is uh, a bit of a nibbler now he doesn't bite he doesn't break the skin he doesn't cause bleeding he just sort of puts his teeth around you and, and holds on, so it doesn't hurt at all. Um, but it's not a behaviour I necessarily want to encourage or keep. So that has really been the focus of, of his taming, just getting him used to me. And I feel like it's a behaviour that will subside once he becomes more trusting of me. Um, and once he gets used to being handled and gets used to my hands. So before I get into this taming session, I'm going to insert the footage from one of his first taming sessions so you can see his starting point and what we've been working with. Hey, no, thank you. Please don't hold onto my hand. Ah, ah, ah. 
Thank you. <laughs> what about that? Huh? There we go. That's nice, isn't it? He's so pale, my camera's struggling to focus on him. Oh, look how puffy you are. He's so puffy. He gorgeous thing. Yeah. There's nothing else left, bud. You ate it all. Look how big he is on my hand. You're gonna be a whopper of a hamster. Because he is a bit of a nibbler, I am very careful about making sure I prepare my hands properly before taming. I'm careful to wash them thoroughly with an unscented soap and also rub them thoroughly through his substrate just to get a familiar scent on them so he's less likely to see me as a threat. So you can see he's really happy to just touch my hand and climb onto my hand. He's not frightened of me in any way. So we know that the, the nibbling behavior is really not from a place of aggression or really a place of fear. It seems to be more of a kind of a warning and a slight curiosity as well. Sort of the warning to say, hey, I'm, I'm trusting you, but I have teeth just so you want, don't, don't. Don't do anything funny. But mainly I feel it's due to him just not being used to my hands, not being used to ha being handled. And I really feel like it's a behavior that will subside as he becomes more trusting of me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna give him a little bit of pasta and use that to lure him onto my hand. He's not had pasta before, so I don't know what he'll think of it. I don't see how that's cheating. That's big time cheating. I'm gonna put it further back on my hand so he has to climb on me to get it. Doing this helps him to associate my hand and my presence with positivity rather than negativity or worry. So using treats in taming is a fantastic way of building a trusting bond. And there we go, he's on my hand. And you can see he's not worried at all. He, he has no issues. Oh, he's just realised. He's got this fantastic slow head turn. It makes him seem so dramatic. I desperately want to catch this close up on camera so that I can gif it and just use it for everything. <laughs> Your beautifully dramatic head turn. Should we pop you back down? There you go. I don't want to try taking him out of his cage just yet. I've taken him out a couple of times and handled him away from the cage and he's been okay with that but I don't want to do it too often at this stage just because he isn't completely trusting of me and I don't want to give him a reason to not trust me. I want him to know that he's safe with me and that when he climbs on my hand nothing's going to happen to him and he'll be able to just get back down and be in the safety of his home afterwards. Ozzy is awake again at last, so we can do a little bit of taming with her. But before we go into it once again, I'm just going to insert the footage from one of her first taming sessions. And Ozzy is actually pretty tame already. The only thing we're working on with her is confidence. Unlike Sulphur, she is not as confident. She is more easily spooked. But when it comes to handling, she's very happy to be handled and held. Um, so there's, there's nothing really that needs improving there. It's just getting her confidence up and just improving the bonding and the trust that she has for me. Look at that. Not fearful of my hand at all. But she's not a big fan of being touched yet. See, she's a little uncomfortable with that. So that's what we've got to work on with her. Oops. But it's great that she's not scared of my hand. That makes things so much easier. That puts us about two, three steps ahead in taming. Hey, there's a good girl. Look at that. Can we just point out here, yeah, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but her coat is changing color. She's actually getting a winter coat. Now, 
This is not super common with winter whites because most winter whites are hybridized these days unless you get them from uh, a pure winter white breeder. Now she's obviously not from a breeder so she's very likely hybridized. So that coupled with the fact that they don't live out in the wild anymore um, so they don't have sort of natural lighting or the natural sunset or natural temperatures and all those things that go into affecting um, the coat change for the winter time it's actually less common to have a winter white that changes color in the winter and it's certainly it's very 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 uncommon to have one that goes completely white I, I apologize by the way if you can hear sulfur clattering around in his wheel um, so coat color change if you have a winter white that has fully changed, you are a very, very lucky person. If you have one that is partly changed or has just gone from either their, their agouti coat or, in her case, um, their sapphire coat to like a lighter brown colour, you are also very lucky because it's not as common. Osmium is actually my fourth winter white, I believe. She's my third sapphire um, and the other colour I had was... Amelaise, who was an agouti colour, and none of my other winter whites ever change colours. And she has got this tiny little brown patching that definitely was not there when I brought her home. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see if that progresses anymore. That's pretty exciting, though. <laughs> She's a lot more interested in her wheel right now. By the way, this wheel is, as it appears to be, made from lolly sticks. And if you want to see how I made this wheel, there is a tutorial on my channel. You can go and check it out, or you can search DIY hamster wheel. It's among one of the top results. So, you know, if you're interested, there's a video for that. Look who's awake already. It's only half past 10. This is amazing. <laughs> hold on, hold on, sweetie. Let me put your light on so we can talk about your fur and how gorgeous you look. It seems Iodine has completely recovered from the balding she suffered due to allergies. She, we discovered, was allergic to her aspen bedding and it was causing her fur to fall out, which is obviously not great, especially for a long-haired Syrian. Um, so we, of course, replaced the aspen with, she currently has wood pellets and paper bedding, and that's clearly working very well for her. We also added some uh, bruised yeast into her diet, which helps with hair growth, and you can see just how stunning she is. I'm going to insert some clips now of what she looked like when we first got her, so when she had her baby coat, <laughs> um, what she looked like when she was suffering with her allergies, so when her fur was starting to fall out, and then you can sort of compare to how she looks now, and just how silky soft she looks. She's absolutely gorgeous <laughs> and apparently enjoying playing a bit of the jumping game. Hey princess, look how pretty you are. Look at you, your fur is stunning. Yes it is. You're just so beautiful. You're so beautiful. <laughs> I'll tell you what we've got to do with you now though. We need to go get the weighing scales and find out if you've gained any weight. Because you were 108 grams last month. And I want to see if you're any tubbier. Because I want you to get just a little bit bigger. You're a teeny, 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 tiny hamster right now. Stay in there for a second. Nope. <laughs> Same weight you were last month. Oh hum, it would have been nice if you'd gained a little bit of weight, but I guess you're always going to be a little thing, huh? You're going to stay small. You look gorgeous though. Look at that fur. Look at how pretty you are. Right, let's see how much sulfur weighs. In you go. <laughs> go on, here we go. 27 grams already at about two months old. That's not bad. That's not bad. You've got a lot of weight to gain still, but that's that's not bad. And finally, Osmium, who I suspect is going to be pretty tiny. 28 grams. Wow. Okay. You really don't look or feel that heavy. My goodness. Okay then. Come here, gorgeous. Let's go. 
Look about you, Cage. He is a good girl. This is where I'll be wrapping up this week's vlog, so I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you had a lovely Thursday, or will have a lovely Thursday. Have had, will have a lovely Thursday, depending on the time zone you're in. But if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. You can also share the channel with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm gonna leave you with an adorable clip of Osmium eating pasta, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.